Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome to a very special interlude to the Minecraft Survival Guide in which we are going to be taking a look at one of Minecraft's most famous game modes, Skyblock. Skyblock in its many forms has existed since 2011 and this classic map challenges your knowledge of Minecraft's mechanics, asking you to survive with just a small area of grass and dirt in the sky, a single tree and a few resources in a chest to get you going. Of course this is classic survival mode stuff, so night will fall, monsters will start to appear on platforms that you build far enough away, phantoms will come down to attack you since this is a newer version of Minecraft that we're playing in, and there are all kinds of challenges to be faced along the way. We're going to try to go to the nether, we will need to gather as many resources as it is possible to get renewably with the mechanics available to us, and this version of the map, presented to us by Dr. Trog on planetminecraft.com, actually has other islands you can reach which contain the other types of wood and other resources that will be essential to our journey here if we want to prove ourselves true masters of Minecraft. A link to download this map if you want to play along at home will be in the description, but for now, without further ado, let's get right into it. And here we are on our first island in this wonderful world of Skyblock. A few things before we start off. Number one, I have no idea why it starts this map off at night time, but it does. Second of all, I don't know if you can see it, if I go to the options menu, you can't. It only does that in Optifine, but I am playing this in Minecraft 1.15.1. Uh, the map is last designed, last updated for 1.14.4, but everything seems to be fine, including the advancements, which don't show anything yet, but they will in just a second. So let's get kicked off with Skyblock. As you can see, we have a grass block here with a few pieces of grass on it, a couple of flowers, and a chest. The chest has some contents in it, some of which will become a lot more useful later on, but to start off with, we've got ourselves some ice and a lava bucket, which are, of course, the ingredients for a cobblestone generator, or at least water and lava are, but ice we can turn into water in a second. We also have a tree, and the tree is going to be very important. It's our source of wood and our source of some more saplings so we can start to grow wood renewably. And that's going to be incredibly important. This map is all about knowing the mechanics of Minecraft really well and understanding how you can use them to get unlimited resources even when you start off on a platform this small. So the first thing I'm going to do just to get them out of the way is to break all these pieces of grass and oh wow okay the seeds did not fall off the edge there which was amazing. If we have some more wheat seeds at the start then so much the better but it looks like we've just got one that's absolutely fine. We can at least grow wheat with that and if we didn't get any wheat seeds that was not going to be the end of the world because eventually we'll be able to fight some skeletons, get some bones, use the bone meal to grow some more tall grass on the grass blocks here and we'll be able to get a little bit more more. I think the first thing we're going to do before we set up the cobblestone generator is get some wood because even if we set up the cobblestone generator now we won't be able to harvest the cobblestone until we have at least a wooden pickaxe. So this is the point at which we have to think about harvesting this tree. Now as you'll see the tree is placed right on the edge of the island here which means we won't be able to get all of the leaves that drop if we just break the trunk of the tree and that could be a crucial mistake if we make it because if all of the leaves on this side do not produce saplings and the ones on that side do, they would all fall out into the void and we would never be able to get them again. We wouldn't be able to regrow our tree and we would only ever have five logs of wood. So what I'm going to do is actually start to break up some of the dirt in this island a little bit. And there you go. That is the first step on our Skyblock adventure. The advancements have been triggered and we will look at those in just a second. But I'm going to break up a bunch of the dirt from here. And this island is three blocks deep. It's three blocks wide and in this L shape and three blocks deep. So we can go down one step further if we want to, which I'll probably do in just a second. But these blocks of dirt here, I'm going to place one block further down. So they are right at the bottom of the island there. And we're going to start making a perimeter around this oak tree so we can make sure that we'll be able to catch any of the drops that come from the leaves of the tree here. So let's start breaking up this section of the island as well. And hopefully we don't we don't need to worry too much about lighting this island up just yet because we are too close to all of the blocks on this island for any hostile mobs to spa start spawning here. Remember, you need to be at least 23 blocks away from an area before it will start to spawn hostile mobs. So we're totally fine 
for the time being. Let's expand this island out just a little bit more. We should now have enough space that we can stand underneath every single leaf block of this tree and hopefully all of the drops will end up landing on us and not landing you know off into the void and not springing off from the tree into the void so i'm going to dig this last dirt block out of here and we're going to start punching the tree to get our first wood logs there we go that's wood log number one and i guess we'll turn that into four planks make ourselves a crafting table and that is the foundation of minecraft right there these are the things that we need uh let me try and get back up onto this island here so i can place the crafting table next to the chest so those two will stay together for the time being i guess we could take out this block here as well but i think i'm going to use it to get to the rest of the tree once we have a couple more logs of course we can break those down into sticks and planks but i'm not going to worry about sticks for the moment because leaves will now also drop sticks in the most recent versions of minecraft so we can actually get our sticks from these first few leaves and by the way in case you've heard this rumor it's actually a myth that there are different drop rates for saplings depending on whether you let the leaves decay naturally or punch them yourself as long as the leaf block breaks in one way or another you will be able to get a sapling out of it but we we need to be very very careful that a i don't walk off the edge carrying all of the wood i've already gathered and b that we get a sapling out of this tree to begin with because if we don't get a sapling there we go we got one fantastic if we didn't get one i would have to reset the map because there would really be no way of me gathering enough materials i mean i guess i could get enough cobblestone with a wooden pickaxe to bridge out to that island but i don't know how far away those islands are so it's a bit of a long shot anyway now we have another sapling i can go ahead and break out the rest of these logs i would really love to get a few more saplings from this tree if we can let's pillar up one more just so we can take out that last wood log there and now the leaves will start to decay naturally and there we go that's what we don't want to happen is a sapling fall off the island but that's fine we've already got one we can always grow another tree and we can start this whole process over again but ideally we will get more than one sapling out of this tree yes perfect we got another one there i'm going to start putting these in the chest for the moment and we'll be able to grab those when we can and as a rule of thumb if you have an excess of saplings always keep some in a chest because if you drop off the island or something carrying saplings you'll still respawn up here but you won't have the saplings on you keep inventory is not enabled i haven't even enabled cheats for this world much as i would like to for the purposes of getting thumbnail screenshots and that kind of thing we will just kind of have to play it by ear in that respect i guess and our last leaf block is getting broken and we got two saplings out of that well technically i guess we got three but we lost one not such a big deal in the grand scheme of things we have ourselves enough wood to get started on our tech tree and we have enough saplings to get some actual trees regrown over here i'm going to place that sapling right back there and that's going to be the foundation of our tree farm which we're going to expand a little bit later now it's time to get started with our cobblestone generator because of course we didn't even get any sticks from that which is kind of a surprise but now we have wood we can make ourselves some sticks and we can make ourselves our first wooden pickaxe of course you can enable the uh, crafting recipes in here you can have the recipe book open if you can't remember the recipes for them and we're only going to make one wooden pickaxe because as soon as we get our cobblestone generator set up we can start using stone tools and skip the whole set of wooden tools entirely now to build a cobblestone generator we've done this in the series before it's nice and straightforward all you need to do is make sure you have a one block wide four block long strip dug out like this and then on one side or the other in the middle of these blocks the second block over dig down one more block and that is the side where you need to place the water or in this case the ice we can break this block of ice with a block underneath it it will convert into a water source and over here on this side you place the lava bucket and when the two of those collide in the middle they make cobblestone of course the reason you need to have the water flowing downwards into the hole is so the water doesn't flow across and turn the lava into obsidian because that is the only lava source you get in this world i don't believe you get any lava from any of the other islands and if we don't have that lava then we cannot produce any more cobblestone Stone, which would be a bit of a disaster so we're going to put the bucket back in this chest for now and don't worry even though the chest and the crafting table are right there next to the lava neither of these are flammable blocks you will occasionally see the ground around here catch fire but the blocks themselves will not catch fire they will not burn it's absolutely fine so now we can probably put a couple of dirt blocks over here just to make sure i uh, have a bit of a platform to step off onto if i need to i'm going to break that block there and we're going to start mining 
our first cobblestone. Before we do that though, I will quickly fill you in on the situation with advancements on this map because there are a few custom advancement packs applied to this which will actually guide you through the Skyblock experience. This first one is a collector's tab, it's all about challenges, collecting as many items as you can and that activates basically as soon as you start to collect any items in the game whatsoever. And there are a few challenges here, things like, you know, getting a stack of arrows from skeletons or by, you know, crafting them yourself, I guess, having every color of dye and using it to, you know, craft every single color of wool, concrete and terracotta, getting stacks of logs of every single type. And as you can see in the islands out there, there are all of the other kinds of wood represented here. You've got a jungle over there. I think that's a savanna island over there with an acacia tree. There is spruce behind us over there. There's another oak tree over there in the swamp with vines hanging from it. I believe there's a birch island out there as well so we can get all of them the second tab here has more to do with the progression of skyblock and what you need to advance through the tech tree for example here we have regrowth to collect a sapling uh, we can get every single type of sapling and then explore all of the surrounding islands of course once we're harvesting cobblestone which we will be able to do like so and hopefully our first block of cobblestone didn't go into the lava yes fantastic that activates cobblestone generator and from there there are a few things we can do we can make a furnace in a minute we can use uh, a little bit of the obsidian that is left for you in the chest here to make a nether portal and set that on fire we can do a whole bunch of other stuff we can construct a mob spawning platform for both passive and hostile mobs these are all things that we're going to do over the course of this short mini series here and now we've harvested a little bit of cobblestone oh there we go like i said those blocks will occasionally set on fire do not panic everything is fine <laughs> totally under control we're going to make our first stone pickaxe and that will of course make harvesting the cobblestone a little bit faster and at this point it's up to us to basically collect as much cobblestone as we possibly can i'm going to start by making uh let's say eight cobblestone to begin with because then we can craft a furnace and with the furnace once we have grown a couple more trees and gotten a few logs we can turn those into charcoal a renewable form of coal that will allow us to craft torches which will make our experience of this skyblock world a lot safer we can also start to use this cobblestone to expand the island around here and split apart this dirt platform so that it turns into a larger space we can use for a tree farm and ideally we want to have a tree farm as far away from the cobblestone generator as possible because of the tendency for lava to set trees and wood type blocks on fire we really don't want to risk losing any of it in the lava and therefore I recommend keeping the cobblestone generator if not as far away as possible that might be a bit of an exaggeration but I would say at least you know seven blocks away I think is the horizontal or vertical distance that lava can travel to any flammable blocks so I'm going to throw the rest of the dirt in here for safekeeping we have a little bit of wood here as well we can keep the wooden pickaxe in there as a backup and now we can craft ourselves our first furnace and I'm going to put that on the opposite side over here we'll be able to retrieve that a little bit later and we can move it around and of course we now have enough cobblestone to make ourselves a second stone pickaxe if we want to the important thing here that i should probably mention before we go any further with this is to make sure that at all times you have at least one block of grass available to you so that the grass during the day or in adequate light levels will spread to the dirt blocks and will kind of repopulate there you go you saw it happen there repopulate this island with grass blocks if you lose all of the grass at any point you lose the ability to bone meal it to make tall grass to get things like seeds and flowers and various other things that will be necessary for your survival and necessary to complete challenges within the map. There are thankfully a few islands out there from which we can have the grass spread again if we do turn all of this into dirt, but I'm basically going to be avoiding doing that at all costs. I think for right now, the best thing to do is going to be to harvest a bunch of cobblestone, maybe convert it into slabs so we don't have to worry about mob spawning on those slabs, and we'll wait for the tree behind us to grow, and then hopefully we should be able to get a little bit more uh, of the island built up behind us. You know what? We may as well plant our other sapling as well, just to give ourselves double the chances for a tree to grow. I'm going to plant that on the edge here, but of course, around the outside of that, I could start to build a little cobblestone platform so that if the tree does grow over here, once again, we have enough surface area that we can harvest some of the leaves without worrying about saplings falling into the void. And will you stop being on fire, please? Thank you. And I think, uh, yeah, once we've harvested a little bit more cobblestone, unfortunately, some of it is going into the lava, but there's not a whole lot you can do about that with this. This design of cobblestone generator right now we should be able to uh yeah get a few more saplings from the leaves of those trees when they grow and we'll be in 
wood production before long. While we're waiting for these trees to grow, I am focusing on getting about a stack of cobblestone, which is once again one of the advancements that we get in that custom advancement pack, but it's also a decent goal to reach in order to have enough material to expand the island out a little bit more. And we will need to cover the underside of this island with cobblestone in a minute to make sure that if we move any of the dirt around, we don't lose it into the void because it's very difficult to pick up blocks that you break like one block down below you. It's easy enough when you're breaking them on the same level as you but if you're trying to get a dirt block that you pulled out of the island from there it's a little bit more difficult and we will do our best to cover the underside of this island in cobblestone using a method which I'm going to show you in a few minutes. There we go, we got ourselves a stack of cobblestone which is absolutely perfect. So now what I think I'm going to do is start putting some cobblestone underneath the underside of the island. And for that, we're going to be putting away all of the non-essential resources, grabbing the bucket of water back from here and placing this against one side of the island like so. And we can use that to create a water elevator for us. And we're going to be able to go up and down this little stream of water and place a little bit of cobblestone in a controlled way underneath the island. Now, this, of course, is a little bit difficult. We will need to ride the jump button a little bit here. I'm crouched on the edge of the island. I'm going to step over onto this block and just drift a little bit to the left, allowing me to place a row of cobblestone underneath here. And I think that is where I will leave it for the moment, because if we count one, two, three blocks out from the side here, if I break this dirt block here, that will now allow me to break a couple of blocks there, and we can actually start covering the island underneath here in cobblestone from the middle which will allow us to reach most of the outside of this island and then we can connect the rest of it up nice and easily after that we can move the water source over to this middle block here we're going to place that going down into the island there there we go and it gives us a nice little staging area and we'll put the bucket back in the chest once again because that is our only bucket we don't have access to iron ore in this world so getting iron is going to be a little bit tricky we're going to have to fight some zombies zombies and hope for a rare drop of iron from them <laughs> but we will have to wait until probably the next episode before we get started on that now i'm going to slowly push myself over into this water source drift downwards and yeah now we can start placing cobblestone underneath all of the blocks of the island under here trying our best to reach every single block of dirt that we can see and of course coming up for air when we need it that's very important we don't want to start taking damage and panicking and then dropping out of the water stream if we can possibly help it we also want to be very careful not to break this water source by placing a block here so it's probably a good idea not to have any blocks in your hand just in case you've got an itchy trigger finger and you right click by accident but there we go we should be able to fill in the rest of these blocks of cobblestone there we go and we'll try our best to reach as far over onto this other section of the island as we can but you don't need to cover absolutely everything because once you get to a certain point you should just be able to uh, see the edges of the blocks here and there and fill those in from the surface it really is taking the trees a little while to grow and they will need a little bit of light to grow so if it gets to night time and the trees still have not grown i'm going to recommend that we make some torches i think that's probably going to be a good idea since we have uh, wood in here that we can cook to make charcoal we can turn the charcoal into some torches or use it to make more charcoal of course and that's going to be a very good renewable source of fuel. I think I am done with the platform underneath the island for the moment. Let's just grab the water from there and we can always fill that one in there with cobblestone as well and we can replace this in the cobblestone generator so that we can grab a little bit more. I think that's going to be a good idea just to grab a little bit more cobblestone, expand the island out a little bit more and start working on a tree farm once those trees give us some more saplings. So this is really the early setup of Skyblock. It's just a grind to a Require resources, which is what puts a lot of people off Skyblock as a game mode. I think it's sometimes just a lot of waiting around, waiting for trees to grow. Once you have a few saplings over here, the trees will grow quite consistently and you'll find yourself needing a little bit less wood as you progress up the tech tree. But it's really the early stages of the map that require a little bit more of a grind. And once again, of course, we have to make sure that we are using our resources effectively. And I think making some sticks and turning some uh, logs into coal is probably going to be our next best bet so I'm going to put one log in there with two sticks which of course is going to burn the sticks and turn that log into a piece of charcoal and we can use the charcoal to make some more charcoal once these trees grow or alternatively we can just go ahead and turn 
another one of these logs into some more sticks and we'll end up making some torches so that the trees have a chance to grow overnight. This is going to be very important because in order to grow, the trees will need an adequate light level, which they're not going to get during the night. So it's important that we set that up before the sun goes down and the trees will be able to continue growing. We can even open the F3 screen to take a look at the growth stage of these saplings, which right now is still at stage zero. I don't know if that actually goes up naturally or if that's just something that happens with bone meal, but Unfortunately, I don't have access to bone meal right now. Another thing it's worth noting as the night draws in is that after a few nights, we are, of course, going to have to deal with phantoms, which were introduced in Minecraft 1.13 and have been the bane of Skyblock players ever since. Because, of course, there aren't any sheep out here that we can shear wool from to get a bed. We don't have the iron to make shears, and we would have to fight a bunch of spiders in order to get enough string to make a couple of blocks of wool ourselves. So I think we are probably going to have to uh, wait around a little bit and cover ourselves during the night after the third night has passed, because after that, our insomnia counter is going to be high enough that we will start to get phantoms spawning in the sky above us, and phantoms hit pretty hard. We do not want to be surprised by one of them in the middle of our skyblock adventure that would not be a good idea and i'm not going to get started on farming until we have a little bit more wood because i am running a little bit low on resources in that regard but sooner or later we will have to start farming because we're going to need food and while there are a few things in this chest that we could end up eating i think it's actually just the melon slice we can turn that melon slice into melon seeds start growing whole melons for ourselves and that will be a decent early food source we can also start growing the wheat seeds although those will be better grown as wheat to be fed to animals with the purposes of course of breeding the animals together and once we have a nice little animal farm over here it's going to be a lot easier for us to get a decent supply of good food if we can get some cows to spawn or some chickens or something like that we'll be able to have a very reliable food source that's going to keep us going for a while but for that of course Passive mobs spawn under the same rules as hostile mobs in that they have to be at least 23 blocks away from the player. And in terms of passive mobs, they also have to be spawned on grass blocks. So we're going to have to figure out a way of getting a grass platform at least 23 blocks away from where we are in order for passive mobs to spawn. And we're also going to have to make sure we mob proof that island against hostile mobs spawning by lighting it up adequately. Otherwise, we're just going to have a huge mess anytime we want to go over there and breed some cows. So I think it's going to be very important to separate out our mob spawning platforms of both categories. Hey, there we go. I turned around and a tree had grown. Fantastic. And now we can start taking this down from the top down. We got another sapling there. Perfect. I'm going to hop down and put that in the chest really quick. And I'm going to break the leaves around here first, just so they aren't affected by the lava in the cobblestone generator. Got another sapling. Excellent. This is very, very good news. At last, we have another tree. And in fact, I might even take some of the wood from this, turn it into sticks, and make myself a stone axe to make the taking down of future trees a little bit faster. There we go. Let's make one stone axe. Let's put the rest of this in the chest for the moment where we can stockpile our resources so far and let's take down the rest of this tree as fast as we can so that the other sapling over here can grow. Now we've harvested enough cobblestone we can also expand the island out into a tree farm and this is really going to be the essence of getting started here because you need wood throughout the entirety of Minecraft. It's the handles for tools, it's you know building blocks and all kinds of other stuff. We will need a whole bunch of wood in our skyblock time and I think it's going to be essential to get a good tree farm set up nice and early. So there we go. Two extra saplings, a bunch of cobblestone in the chest. I think it's time to move out a little bit further here and start a new area for the tree farm. So what I'm going to do is set up an area where several blocks apart we'll be able to plant saplings and hopefully we can plant them in such a way that the leaves will not overlap and we can get the maximum amount of leaf coverage per sapling, meaning that we get the maximum amount of chance of having more saplings grow. So let's grab the dirt from here and I think we're going to space these at least three blocks apart, if not more. In fact, leaves normally come out at least two or three blocks from the trunk, so we want 
ideally four or five blocks between the trees. So let's start with one here. We'll count one, two, three, four, five, and we'll put another block there. Four, five, and we'll put another block there as well. And then we can surround the entirety of these with cobblestone blocks and of course light them up adequately as we go to make sure that the trees here are going to grow. And this is the point where the perfectionist in me has realized that these are four blocks apart and those are five blocks apart. So I think I'm going to move this over one more block, being very, very careful to make sure I keep the dirt, keep the sapling. There we go. We can plant the sapling back there once again. And if we need to layer up this island a couple of blocks at a time, that's good because it means if we accidentally dig down or if we want to create a slightly lower layer to the island, we have plenty of room in which to do that. All right, our little tree farm is started up and hopefully should have an adequate amount of light if we just place a torch evenly spaced between these saplings. There we go, we got another tree. Fantastic stuff that happened just as I was about to start talking about something else. So that was very, very good timing. Thank you very much, Minecraft. Let's break down some more leaves from this tree and see if we can get some more saplings to start our tree farm off. Ideally, I want to have around six or seven to begin with because I think that's going to be a good number to keep the trees, if not constantly in production, then at least growing sort of frequently so that every time we turn around, we are more than likely to see another tree will have grown. And we We've got one sapling from this so far. We got a stick from that as well, which I will take as a nice freebie. And of course, with these being oak trees, there's a chance of us getting apples from them occasionally as well, which will be a really nice early food source. Looks like even though we got a whole tree out of that, we only got one oak sapling from it. So I'm just going to have to replant that straight away. Luckily, we got five oak logs, and now we should have enough to make a little bit more charcoal and then create a whole eight charcoal with just the one charcoal that we make out of that. And that's what makes it a really great renewable fuel source. Let's throw the sticks in there for the minute, make ourselves a single block of charcoal with, with which we can smelt the other eight logs. And now our tree farm should be producing every so often. And it might seem strange to immediately turn all of this into charcoal, but of course wood being super renewable, it's really going to be a benefit to us to do that now. And in the meantime, I have enough planks and sticks that I can create a few extra tools. The last thing I'm going to do in this episode is make myself a hoe and using the water source that we've got for our our cobblestone generator, I'm going to set up a very small farm around here. The farm here is going to be producing some of the stuff that we got in the chest here. For a start, we have the wheat seeds that we picked up by, you know, punching all of the tall grass that we had here at the beginning. I'm going to place those there and we get the advancement for a CD place. Some of the advancements from Minecraft have kind of been copied over into this advancement pack. And now we are a farmer. I think we get the farmer achievement by picking up those. Yes, there we go. Okay, getting those out of the chest. Uh, now we have unlocked this category of different things which we can farm and again, challenges that we can get for uh, farming a whole bunch of stuff at once. Now, the other stuff we have in here is a melon slice, which we are going to convert into melon seeds. Resist the urge to eat it if you can, because we need to be placing that there. Remember that melons will need an adjacent space of dirt or farmland or grass in order to grow onto it. So you cannot surround a melon with stone blocks. It has to be dirt if you want the melon to grow onto any of those blocks. Likewise, over here, we're going to place our pumpkin. Same thing. The pumpkin has to have adequate dirt around it to grow. And in fact, we might want to expand the platform up here with a little bit more dirt if we can in order to maximize the amount of spaces in which the melon or pumpkin could grow. For now, I'm okay with it, I think, at the moment. And we can also take advantage of the fact that if you plant crops side by side, if they are different crops but are planted in rows next to each other so that the some of the uh, crops horizontally are different types of crops, that actually increases the chance for them to grow an extra point. So it's actually kind of worth planting things in a row if you want them to grow a little bit more efficiently. Hydrated farmland is obviously of importance here and once we start to acquire bone meal, we can start to boost the crop growth artificially and get a little bit more stuff that way. But bone meal is a long way off at this point because then we need to think about mob spawning. I'm going to gather a little bit more cobblestone here and we can also talk a little bit about resource efficiency because if you consider the fact that I've made this platform out of full blocks, some people might consider that a waste because with three blocks, we can make six slabs and using slabs around here might actually be a slightly more efficient way of doing things. We can create top half or bottom half slabs to limit mob spawning in the areas where we have bottom half slabs if we want to 
but you can also use top half slabs and cover twice the amount of area you could with blocks. The reason I haven't done that so far, aside from, you know, laziness and not wanting to overcomplicate things, is the fact that this area is going to stay largely lit up. And slabs sometimes create situations if you kind of stand half on a block and half on a bottom half slab, you can sometimes fall off. And I don't really want to fall off into the void right now because I, I've made that mistake before, my friends, and it isn't all that fun dropping into the void with all of your tools on you. But as long as you know what you're doing and how to trade carefully, you should be just fine. So I'm going to put some of the uh, extra resources here in the chest. And once we get a little bit more wood, we should be able to make other chests for storage and additional tools and that kind of thing. But for now, I'm just gonna be grinding cobblestone for a little while. One last thing we're gonna do while we're here is place down this sugar cane that I got from the chest. We're gonna place that a block over from the blocks where we might want our pumpkin and melon to grow just to make sure that it's not going to interfere with those. It does need to be placed adjacent horizontally to water, whether that is still water or flowing water. And we will need to go out to one of these other islands to find another water source at some point. I have a feeling that island over there with the vines is a swamp island, so that will probably have another water source on it as well, because being able to create an infinite water source would put us at a massive advantage here, and we'd be able to do a lot more with that. But with the sugarcane here, we can, of course, multiply the amount of sugarcane we get just by waiting for it to grow. And I believe out there somewhere is a desert island which will have sand and cactus on it, allowing us to do the same thing. After all, that is basically the only way to get regular green dye is from smelting cactus. So I think that is where we are going to leave it for today, folks. We have a tree farm set up. We have a cobblestone generator. We have a little crop farm here so that we'll be able to create food for ourselves and food for animals to spawn. And I think that's really going to be a great start to our Skyblock adventure. In the next episode, we will probably get as far as making mob spawning platforms for passive and hostile mobs. We will see. But for now, that's going to be it for this episode of Minecraft Skyblock. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.